Hey peeps, happy Halloween, blessed sewing. I'm so excited to be able to spend some time with you guys on this, my most favorite Sabbath on this most beautiful day and night. I am just, oh, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. It's very cold though, so I did wanna wear, I had, you guys know that I love, um, you know, I love my outfits and, and my makeup, etc. I did have a really gorgeous, gorgeous um, outfit planned for this recording, <laughs> but it is just simply too cold here. So instead I have two sweaters, um, a shrug and a scarf on, and here we are, but we are all snuggly and warm instead of hammer horror goddess goodness today. Uh, but I'm just, I'm so stoked to be with you guys and be sharing um, just, just some time together. I thought I would just do kind of a little chatty video. I do have a reveal that I want to share with you guys. A wonderful sister in tarot and viewer sent me this deck and I did unbox it myself because the deck is out and I'll explain why in a few minutes, but I do want to share what the deck looks like because I will be posting a full review of it. And I thought what better Sabbath to reveal this deck for than than so and so. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But first of all, I'm going to cheers you guys and Santa Marta, as well as the Essence of Death and the Archangel Asriel for this beautiful sewing. It's wonderful to spend some time with you guys. And I hope whatever you are sipping on out there, be it wine, um, lively spirits, or tea, or coffee, um, I hope you'll just take a moment and cheers with me. Blessed sewing. It's wonderful to get a chance to connect with you today. So I'm going to have a sip of this. And then really quickly, I'm going to be a little bit of a makeup geek on you. Um, so you guys know in the drop down description box, I usually post like what I'm wearing for lipstick and what I'm wearing for eyeshadow palettes because my fellow makeup loving junkies usually ask, you guys want to know, and I, I love to share with you guys. But I thought I would actually talk about what I'm wearing today because I'm very, um, very much in love with today's choices and they were very specifically chosen to honor this Sabbath. So I am wearing one of my favorite black liquid lipsticks ever. And this is kind of infamous within the dark aesthetic loving community. This is Black Moon Cosmetics Sleepwalker Liquid Lipstick. Uh, it is a wonderful matte black. I will say it's not quite as long, um, long wearing, excuse me, as a few of my other black liquid lipsticks, but it is super comfortable. It's so lightweight. Like you forget you're wearing lipstick. I really enjoy this formula. So this is Black Moon Cosmetics Sleepwalker liquid lipstick. I will say if you like me, so I'm 39 and I have noticed over the last year that I do have to be more aware of um, my lipstick feathering. And so I will say that Black Moon Cosmetics formula isn't the most friendly for feathering, but you can, you can beat it, uh, by using a liner first and setting that with powder that does help with the feathering a great deal. So if you are considering trying Black Moon Cosmetics and that's something that's come up as a problem for you, I would say just use those little tricks and that will definitely help. But I do find that Black Moon Cosmetics formula does feather a little bit more than, say, uh, my Melt Cosmetics or uh, Jeffree Star Cosmetics or even Kat Von D, um, excuse me, KVD Beauty brand now, but even um, their liquid lipsticks. So if you have a problem with feathering, I would recommend working with that method because it will help with it. But I I had to wear black lipstick today. It's so in, right? How could I not? So the other thing that I wanted to share with you guys is what I'm wearing for the eyeshadow palette today because I'm really in love with this eyeshadow palette. And it's very neutral. And you would think that it would not be what created this look at all today, but it actually is. And it's it's pretty awesome. I purchased both Sleepwalker and this palette with my own funds. So I wasn't sent anything just, just in case someone's wondering that. But this is the Nomad Air palette. And um, yeah, this is what I am wearing. And it's, I have all six colors on my lids with a black liner and it is amazing. Can I just say like, I am so in love with this and I'm not usually into like the pink tones, but it is really working for me. It's making me very happy. So if you are wondering what I'm wearing for eyeshadow, it's the Nomad Air Palette. And I have to say guys that the Nomad palettes, um, they're an indie makeup brand. I think they're actually kind of surpassing my melt 
um, cosmetics palettes and I love my, I still love and adore my malt cosmetics palettes, but the Nomad quality is pretty freaking awesome and it's substantially less expensive as well. So if you're looking for an indie eyeshadow palette on a budget, I would definitely say go with Nomad, but this is amazing. Like, look, I don't know. The color payoff is just insane. Like, yeah. So also guys, I know um, that it, the background is washing things out a little bit and I am working on that. Thank you for being patient with me, but yes, I am working on that. So I am aware of it and we are working with it. So, so in vibes. Yeah, there's been, um, I was so honored to be able to, um, lead the so in circle observance called the cops yesterday. For those of you that chose to participate, it was such an honor and a privilege, such a powerful observance. The veil is super, super thin this year. So if you are, uh, I'm going to upload this on Sewin. And if you are feeling called to do any kind of ancestral work or to connect with anyone who's passed over or any entity or being that's in um, a realm beyond the veil, this is the sa the the Sabbath, as always. I mean, so on such a powerful Sabbath for it. But I think like especially this year, it's a super, super powerful um, Sabbath for that type of work because the intensity of the beings coming through to communicate, at least for myself in the work that I do, has just been through the roof uh, to, th to such an extent that, you know, I've kind of had to unplug a little bit and find ways to uh, be a little bit human for a time here and there when I get an hour or two to do that um, as a means of like kind of riding these, these, these powerful stallions of uh, a sewing Sabbath. So, I always feel very connected to Santa Muerta, um, or this time of year especially. And I would say um, Asriel has really come forward as well as an entity that I feel very, very much in communication with at this point in time in a really, really um, beautiful way. So, yeah, I've really been feeling how thin the veil is this year especially. So honored and just it was such a beautiful observance yesterday such a wonderful gathering of all of us I think we had about 50 people and it was just so beautiful and so powerful um it's always such an honor to be in circle in that way and so that was really really special yesterday I'm still kind of basking in the glow of that observance um let's see what else did I want to say about that yeah Asriel so I I have come to love Azriel so much and you know he is he is technically an archangel he's on the angelic realm although you can also I, I think he's I think he kind of rides both sides of the fence there between angels and demons but Azriel's energy is so hauntingly beautiful and I feel really blessed to have been building a connection with him over the last few years. You know, I have a tattoo in his honor, believe it or not. Um, and I, you know, we, we kind of had taken a little bit of a break over the summer, but he came roaring back in recently. And so I've really been enjoying spending time with him. And the Angelarium, uh, Pete Morbacher, I always forget his name until I say on Angelarium, the Angelarium Oracle, which I believe one of my wonderful, wonderful bestie sisters in tarot let me know that there is maybe supposed to be a tarot deck or another Oracle deck coming from him, which I'm super stoked about. But I digress. His depictions of Asriel um, have been some of my favorites. And he has a, a driftwood castle uh, excuse me, a driftwood cathedral of Azriel's that there is a painting of somewhere. I think you can find it on his site or his Instagram page. That is so stunning. Um, and so I've really been enjoying connecting with Azriel within that space um, in my own personal journey work. 
So I've really, really been enjoying that and felt very fed by that energy. Um, and I've also been working with the Dark Prince, aka Satan, aka the devil, whatever you would like to call that energy. And I know that some of you have asked me recently if I would do another video on Satan. I actually have a video out there in the world on him and why I consider Satan and Lucifer to be separate entities. But I will, I am considering doing another video. Um, it's, it's fascinating that even in this day and age, that still is such a um, a hot, uh, a hot button. Is that the phrase? A hot, whatever. It's such a heated topic, right? Um, and so I don't always love to post a video that then I have to, you know, handle the fallout from. But uh, I do think I will do another video kind of clarifying working with Satan versus Lucifer and even the, the folklore mythological aspects of um, the energy of the devil, the old one. So there, I am considering doing a video on that, but I have been working with that, with his energy, excuse me, the Soen, um, Satan and I go way back. So it's been wonderful to connect with him. And you know, the thing that I love about walking a path with, oh my God, guys, this is a chatty video. I hope you're all, those of you who love long videos, here you are, happy Soen. Here's your gift from me. Um, but uh, okay, I digress. Let me go back. Um, oh, the beauty about walking a, a path with deity that welcomes multi, uh, multifaceted aspects of deity. The, the beauty of that path is that we have our, our ride or dies. We have our long-term deity. And when we take a little break from them or, or with them, when we take a little space or we go on a little adventure with someone else and we come back, there's such like a beauty to coming home to, to deity that is daily deity. And so I have really had a sweetness with the energy uh, that is called Satan the devil. Um, I really had a, such a just beautiful experience with him recently in, in coming back to him as part of, of my own practice after having taken a little vacation. Um, I, I hung out w with Osiris for a little bit. I was surprised to hang out with Osiris, but we spent a little bit of time together. And then, you know, Satan was like, hey, um, I'm your main bitch, so I'm back. <laughs> I'm back as your face of the sacred masculine. But it, there's such a beautiful um, flow with deity. So I just want to say for you, you know, if you've come to the channel because you're new to the channel, uh, excuse me, because you're new to a pagan path um, and, and you've just found the channel recently, which I know some of you have reached out and expressed, you, you know, we do have those deity that are consistent our rider dies, our patroness, our patron saint, uh, excuse me, our pa <laughs> I'm all over the place today, our patroness, or our patron god, or goddess, um, or saint as well, if you're working with saint energy, um, but we do have those rider dies, most of us that have been on this path for a while, and it's so beautiful to have those cornerstones, those touchstones, right, like I consider them like the major arcana, so you always are going to come back to those faces of deity, much like I will always come back to tarot vampires. And for you with your home tarot deck, like that's, you're always going to come back to that, right? Um, but it's wonderful to get a chance to explore connecting with another face of deity and seeing where that takes you and what that experience is like as well, right? And then you get to come home and you remember how beautiful home is, right? I don't know. Maybe this is just a Taurus Scorpio thing, but... I love that feeling of like, I've traveled somewhere and then when you come home and it just feels so good, right? It just feels so good to be back home. That's what it feels like when Isis and Satan are like, hey, come back home, sweetheart. And uh, then to get to step into that intimate space with them just is so, it's like, it's such a gift and it's so beautiful. So... I've really been just kind of reveling in deity practice and my own time and space, which I don't have that much of for just myself, you know, um, outside of work and being a mom. There isn't really a lot of space for that type of exploration. And so I feel very blessed in those moments when I can journey and connect with them in that way. It's so powerful. So that's really been a lot of what this sewing has been about for me. And I've also been thinking about the word personally, um, sacrifice and and what that means and what it entails 
And when is it worth making a sacrifice and when have you given too much? You know, um, I felt very much through a lot of this year a, a need to be um, alone and, and within my own solitude. Again, probably because I don't have a lot of time for that um, personally, but also sometimes when you move through things, it's difficult to put them into words, isn't it? And vulnerability can be really scary. So uh, that solitude has been something that's felt appropriate, but I do feel a shift with that energy coming through as well. And this is a step at when we do really begin to go within, to look within, to turn within, to find, you know, one of my favorite things about when Ian Daniels talks about the hermit card in Tarot of Vampires and he talks about the hermit, the, the hierophant being like the esoteric knowledge, but the hermit being the lived feeling space of that. It's when you don't just know it and express it, but you actually feel it, you breathe it, you live it, right? And I think this, uh, the Sabbath of Sowen, this Sabbath and the next two Sabbaths really move us so powerfully through that energy of like, living the path, the path, living the practice. And that is something that is solitary in its nature, right? So I've just kind of been sitting with all of that beauty and just, and just enjoying that and reveling in that, you know, while I also have the contrast of my son having a very social year and being very, very much in his, um, making friends public self space so we've had this beautiful kind of dance going on and it's been really enjoyable to both you know um, support each other and get to share those experiences together those experiences of being social and building friend groups for my son and then for me of of being in solitude and needing time alone to grieve and mourn or also just needing time alone to regenerate. I think that's something societally, especially in the States, we really don't give ourselves is time to regenerate. Even when we're alone, we're on a device or we're doing, or I don't know, we're looking at something and there isn't a lot of time to regenerate. And I've really been um, appreciating, you know, taking that extra hour at night, going to bed an hour early instead of staying up late and, and letting some of that solitude be about regeneration, journeying and sleep, right? So, Anyhow, that's 17 minutes of just witchy chat and general chat about things that I love. <laughs> I want to talk now about the silver acorn tarot. So the, there's been like, uh, I love how sometimes I don't jump on purchasing a deck right away because uh, either, you know, for obviously we all have budgets and either for budgetary reasons, but also like sometimes I think, well, maybe the deck will come to me when it's supposed to, right? So uh, um, I think it was either the beginning of this month or the, the end of last month, um, I got to have a wonderful hang with a very dear sister in tarot. And um, she showed me this deck and I was really drawn to it, but I, I wasn't quite in my budget at the time. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to like let, if it's supposed to come to me, then I'll know it's supposed to come to me, right? And so she had shared her experience with the deck and it's it's whimsical but it has depth right that was kind of what my takeaway was from from her sharing this deck with me and then um a very very generous lovely viewer and sister in tarot sent this deck to me and it i got it in the mail on i believe it was late on saturday but i didn't open it until yesterday after the sew and observance and i was like oh my god i'm supposed to have this deck so this is the Silver Acorn Tarot with artwork by Steph Bashama. Um, I should say Stephanie Bashama or Steph Bashama. You guys may remember at the inception of the channel, way back in the baby days of this channel of Owl Moon 513, I was still managing a retail shop in New Hampshire called Made on Earth. And um, I had the privilege of being able to carry a very special line of vintage reproduction clothing called Pinup Girl Clothing. And Steph Bushama did a limited edition uh, clothing series with them. I don't, she may still be doing it. I, I don't know. I've, I'm not, I'm not working in retail anymore, but she did these beautiful dresses. And I actually still have one of the dresses in the, this, this gorgeous Halloween print that she did. Uh, it's, and her artwork is very fifties um, reminiscent 
similar to D Disney artwork from the time, but also, and in the guidebook in this tarot deck, it's discussed as well, postcards from early 19th, excuse me, early 20th century. Um, Buscema's artwork is very reminiscent of that type of artwork. So I had, I've, I already had a love of Buscema's art because of the clothing that I sold and that I wore and still have um, with some of her gorgeous, very unique, lovely prints. And so when I saw that she was the artist for this deck, I knew it was going to be a special deck. And then the imagery I saw was absolutely gorgeous. So I will read the chat having commenced in full I will read um let me show you that the spine there I'm like into the spine lately of these boxes especially the Slavic legends in this one isn't that beautiful so I will read the back to you <laughs> this is I'm having a happy witch day okay it says a whimsical colorful and fully illustrated 78 card tarot inspired by the classic Smithwaite deck each card is rich with detailed original imagery, lovingly hand-painted by creator Stephanie Bishema. The set includes a 117-page full cover color, excuse me, guidebook written by teacher and tarot reader Madame Pam Pamita with a forward by author Judica Isles. This guidebook leads readers through interpretations, keywords, and meanings, everything you need to get started on your journey with the Silver Acorn Tarot. And I can say that the guidebook is definitely worth a read. Um, it's really beautiful. So when I opened the deck, it came with this lovely postcard. If you're a cat person, you will love that one. This is the little guidebook. Definitely gives you information. And you know what I really love is each card has a list of important symbols. So if you're new to working with symbolism and especially occult symbolism, then that's going to be a really nice jumping off point for you to start to get comfortable with the symbolism that is used in tarot. So I do recommend giving this guidebook a read. It's it's good. Uh, I, I did a nice little read through myself last night. And then here is the card that is affirming that it's first edition, limited to a thousand copies. I will put the link to purchase this deck down below. Um, I'm not sure what's still available. Again, I was sent this as a gift. So if... Um, if there's still any available, the link will be down below. And then inside of the box says, may this deck bring you insight, knowledge, and joy on your tarot journey. Isn't that lovely? So just so that you can see comparison wise, here is the Silver Acorn Tarot. And then here, oh, where's my writer Wade Smith? Here's the Centennial Pamela Coleman Smith. So longer, thinner. Now, Let's talk about the cardstock. The cardstock feels like the linen cardstock that, you know, is in Pagan Other Worlds Tarot, which, yeah, we've already talked about that. I'm not gonna, that's like a whole separate thing. But anyhow, it feels similar to that to me. It is very slippery. I literally don't care. The deck makes me that happy that I could care less what kind of cardstock it's on. But I do want to just say, if you are not smitten with the art, uh, smitten with the artwork, it is a slippery deck. It does have that linen feel. It's not shiny. Well, it's not super shiny, I should say. You know, it's got, it's like a little embossed, but it's not slick. It's not wet like the first edition of the Icy's Oracle is, which is a separate discussion for another day with another glass of wine. <laughs> um, where was I? Cardstock. So yeah, it's, it is slippery. I don't want to lie to you about that. But again, the artwork is just so whimsical and sweet and just loving. And it feels like a hug from an aunt, this deck, at least so far. Like I said, I've, 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 I just opened it last night. I've only done a few spreads and a couple little sample things with it. I have not read for anyone else with it. I did decide that I wanted to unbox it myself because the artwork felt very special to me. But I did want to do a reveal on the channel as well. And as you guys know, if you send me a deck, I do try to do some type of video on the channel featuring it as a thank you to you for um, sending the deck my way. Because I know when you guys send me decks, it's because you watch videos on the channel. So this is the backing. It's really lovely. I'm actually not a purple girl for those of you who... Um, who may or may not know, um, although someone did tell me the other day, I can't call myself a girl anymore because I'm a woman, so I don't know, whatever. I'm not a purple person, um, but I do like this purple with this really like ginger root type tone, 
and this really lovely olivey green. So the backing I actually really enjoy and I love that this it has the sun and moon. I just think it's so sweet, especially if you use reversals. So the imagery is so sweet. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Wait till you guys see the two of cups in this deck. I, I have to say, you guys know that like, whimsy is usually not my place. I like it dark, I like it brooding, I like it moody. There goes the train. Which side now, can we talk about full circle? This is the same train that used to go near my house when I was growing up where my father worked. <laughs> full circle moment. Yes, the universe always brings us back to the beginning at times. Um, anyhow, so where was I? Whimsy? Oh, dark brooding. Yes, I like dark brooding and moody. I like vampires. I like a little sex with my artwork typically. But this artwork is so sweet. It reminds me of childhood. It reminds me of that 50s Americana feel that we all love in our own ways or can at least appreciate, I should say. It reminds me of drives up the main coastline, you know, going through the kitschy flea markets. And I just, I really, it's like the woodsy version of that. And I really, really love this deck. And you know what I'm going to use this deck with? You guys already know, Coastal Curiosities. Hello. Is it even like, Avi? It will, I think it will actually work really well with Coastal Curiosities. Now you guys can see me trying to remember where I put Coastal Curiosities. Oh my God. I have to say like with moving, so finding a new way to like store things and have new systems and new spaces is tricky. But let me come back to the deck. So I'm not a Disney girl. I'm, I'm not a Disney person. Excuse me. Um, I'm just not, I'm never, I'm never really going to be. However, I do understand the sword in the stone, fox and the hound, um, Bambi, like movies from that time period, this artwork is very reminiscent of. So I completely understand people saying that that's really what it reminds me. Look at this six. It's so stinking cute. It's like the little sibling to deviant moon in a way. Oh my God. Now I want to put them together. <sighs> okay. Dueling tarot spreads, deviant moon, silver acorn tarot. I'm going to do that on the channel. I'm going to do that, guys. Yes. I think we need to do that. So anyhow, let me come back to the deck. This is I, this is totally getting uploaded as a chatty video because it's not a reveal. I, mean, I am just like blabbing and looking at cards with you guys. Um, but I can see why for a lot of us, like it, it is very reminiscent of that time period, the Disney artwork from that time period, etc. So I do completely understand that. Understand why people look at the the pentacles are these little radishes and beets. Aren't they the cutest? <sighs> look. Oh my god. I am so in love. I'm so in love. Look at that. Ugh. It's so beautiful. I can't, to the viewer who sent this to me, thank you so much. Thank you. I do feel like this is a deck I'm supposed to have. Like when it, when I opened up the, the gift box and this was what was in there, I was like, I know you just know, like when decks come to you in that way, it's like, okay, I'm supposed to have this deck. I'm supposed to work with this deck. I don't really understand maybe why in the moment, but like this reminds me of the Darkwood Tarot where over the years, it's just like, wow holy shit how can, how did i live without this deck in my life and i think that this might be one of those decks for me and actually very similar to like the mibramig tarot which you guys know which side note i i lost my mibramig but it's fine i'm gonna get my mibramig back but i love the mibramig tarot you guys know i talked about it on the channel for years um it's a very very precious precious deck okay ready two of cups Isn't it the cutest? I'm so smitten. This reminds me of Disney's Alice in Wonderland, the original Alice in Wonderland for sure. So let me see. Is there anything else I'm going to show you guys? Look at the Knight of Cups. Oh, it's so precious. I'm so in love with this deck. Five cups there. Like last night I was, here's the star. Last night I was clearing the deck and just like so, you know, when you have your ritual set up, 
for your deck clearing when you've been working with tarot that long, right? You have a specific ritual that you do. You have your certain tools that you gather and you get you get your stuff out and you sit down and it is, it's, it's a ritual, yes, but then like that whole experience becomes its own ritual. And I just had such a glorious moment of the smoke and the flame and the tea with the deck and just, oh, it was just glorious, 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 glorious. But I digress. This is a very special deck. It is Rider Waite Smith True. So if you're new to tarot, you can easily work with this deck. Um, if you're an, a, a tarot aficionado, I think you would still enjoy this deck because the artwork is different. The color tonality is very autumnal. It's very unique and it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I think the size of this deck is just right for the artwork. I don't mind the linen. I've actually gotten used to it and I kind of secretly am liking it now. I mean, I really bitched on Pagan Other Worlds with that cardstock. I know I did. I know. I know. Um, it's grown on me a little bit. I'm a little less angsty about it. Um, it's not my preferred. I still prefer matte cardstock, but I don't mind the linen style cardstock. This deck is slippery, but I do think with use, it will be a little less slippery. And because I'm not traveling a lot as a reader anymore, I don't worry so much about slippery decks. And it's able to like sit on my table and it was on my altar last night without slipping everywhere. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. But first impressions of this deck is that I, I'm in love with it. And this really cute, kitschy, like sweet, lovely way. But the deck also feels like it has depth too, which is like I say, I've always said that about Mibbermig too. Like it's whimsical and it's sweet and it's a little silly, but Mibbermig always would give a good reading. And I do think the artwork in this deck feels like it can definitely give a good reading as well. So if you're on the fence about it, those are my first impressions of working with the deck. Like I said, I just opened and unboxed it last night. Um, it was my little enjoyable space for myself after um, such a powerful soul and observance with, with those of you who chose to participate. So yeah, I hope that your soul and observance is feeling authentic and right for you. I hope you're feeling plugged in and connected to your practice. Thanks for hanging out with me for half an hour. I um, I'm sending you so much love and many blessings. And of course, as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care.